Hey everybody, my name's Ray. This is the CN Tower. You're watching Click Branch. Now that we have our data loading and showing, the next thing we need to do is give the users the ability to actually interact with the data, which means give them the ability to start making selections and uh, refining the data that's shown uh, in order to try to discover their own insights. The way that we're gonna do this with this data set is we're gonna create some filters up on the top that the users will be able to click into and um, the data will update automatically. So to get started, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take an image that we're going to need. Uh, this is a separator image, which is basically just a, um, a, a nice gradient line in between the title of the filter and the actual list of in, inside of the filter itself. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is we need to update our Enigma service and we need to create um, a new function called get list and this get list will take a field which is the name of the field that we're looking to get the data from uh, and a callback which is very similar to uh, the hypercube uh, callback that we had before um, this is all everything that's happening with the list is going to be pretty familiar uh, if you've already watched the video on uh, getting hypercube data so the first thing we're going to do in here is we're going to create a list object definition object. Yes, we're going to create a list definition object, um, which is going to look a lot like a hypercube definition object, uh, just with some different uh, properties inside of it. So we're still going to have our Q info with a Q type, and we're just going to say field list. And then we need a Q list object def. And uh, this is what tells uh, the engine that we're actually looking to create a list instead of a hypercube. So here we'll have a Q def with Q field defs inside of it. And this will be an array of the fields that we're looking for. So we'll just pass in the field name that we get passed in uh, into the function itself. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna specify some sort criteria. And the reason why we want to do this is because we want to let the engine handle the sorting so that the front end doesn't have to. The first thing we're going to sort by is a state. And we specify a value of one because we say we want to sort in ascending value. So when you do Q sort by state and you specify one, you're going to be sorting by your selected values first. Uh, then it's your uh, alternative values, your available values and your excluded values. Uh, the reason why we're sorting by state is because uh, it's going to become more apparent once the selection is actually being made. But uh, when they make selections on their field values, we want the selected ones to come up top and the excluded ones to go to the bottom. Uh, we basically want to group our uh, values by their state to make it easier to uh, see what's going on with the data. The second thing we're going to sort by um, is sort by ASCII. And sort by ASCII is just a way of saying we want to sort by uh, alphabetical order, alphanumeric order. Uh, so we specify a value of one there too because we also want that to be ascending. Uh, we are gonna say a Q show alternatives is true. Now what Q show alternatives does is it tells the engine that in this, when you give me back this list, I don't want just the uh, selected or available data because if Q show alternatives is false, uh, it will only return the data relevant to the data set you're looking for, uh, to, to the data you've selected. But instead we're saying show alternatives because we actually want to see all of the data um, with their relevant state uh, attached to them. So that's why Q show alternatives is true. And then we're gonna do this Q initial data fetch, which looks very familiar to the Q initial data fetch uh, that we did in the hypercube definition. Um, and it does the exact same thing. We do Q top of zero. Uh, we're gonna do a Q height of 10,000. And the reason why we do, we probably don't need to do a Q height of 10,000 because the um, there's likely not 10,000 unique values. Uh, in e any of these fields that we're going to call. Um, but I do this to illustrate the point that uh, any hypercube or list that you get back from the engine has a maximum of 10,000 data points. Uh, so by doing Q height of 10,000, we know that we're going to get with a Q width of one, 
we know that we're going to get uh, the maximum amount of values available uh, in this field list. So now that we have our um, our list or our uh, list object definition created, we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing as we did uh, with the hypercube. So we're going to create a new list object um, by calling document dot create session object and passing in our uh, properties. And then we're going to say uh, if there is a callback, then we want to uh, call this changed function. Uh, we Sorry, if there is a changed event, uh, then we want to call this callback. So we do this callback with a list object. And then finally, we're going to actually call a callback last. So that uh, is our new function inside of our Enigma service. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to actually want to create the filter component, which is what is going to house um, all of the individual um, values for each filter that we create. So the first thing I'll do is I will uh, add in some CSS here. And this CSS is basically um, creating our filter uh, component right here. There, we're gonna have a title that has some nice font and color. Uh, we wanna update the content. We wanna make sure that uh, we have a scroll bar available so uh, that it will vertically scroll um, and that we don't have a scroll bar available on the horizontal. We don't want any horizontal scrolling. Uh, this is just some uh, updating of the actual uh, visuals of the scroll bar itself. Uh, and then each one of our uh, filter items inside of the filter. To create our filter, uh, the first thing we need to do is import React and all of the React necessary things we need. So we're going to need our use state hook because we want to hold on to the actual list that we're uh, going to be using. And we need our use effect to know that when um, we are initially creating the component, that's when we want to actually uh, create our list. Next thing we're going to do is import our Enigma service. Slash Enigma service. We want to import our CSS. Uh, and we want to import that separator image that we're going to use. So uh, we're going to create a new component, and we're going to um, we're going to add some props because uh, these are going to be properties that we pass through for each one of the filters, which will be our field our field name. Uh, and the title uh, that we want um, for this individual filter. Uh, once we do that, we're going to need our filter list. So we create that with our use state hook, which initializes to an empty array. Um, then we're going to say use effect. Um, and we want this to only run once. So we're going to pass an empty array. So when we first get started, we're going to do enigma service dot get list, and we're going to pass in the name of the field that we're looking for, which is the name that's going to be passed through our properties. And we're going to pass in update list, which is a function that we will create right now, which will act as the callback. So we're going to be doing some asynchronous stuff inside of it. So we call async and we are getting the model back in this callback. So first thing we need to do, uh, the same thing that we did before is we do model.getLayout. This is the same thing that we did with the hypercube. Um, and then we are going to uh, map through our Q matrix, which is the exact same Q matrix uh, that we were using before, except this is gonna sit under Q list objects. So instead of uh, Q hypercube, we're going to go under Q list object 
we're still going to look at data pages 0 and Q matrix. So we're going to map uh, through that and for each one of the list items inside of our um, Q matrix, uh, we're going to get the value, get the item, which will be uh, the first value. Um, then we want to uh, set the value to uh, either the Q text or if there's no Q text, because it's possible that a field for a specific value uh, doesn't have anything inside of it, but we want the ability for the user to know that that value is available uh, for actual selection. So what we will do is we will say, if there's text, we want the text. If there's no text, we want uh, to show none in uh, angle brackets. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a uh, class as array. And the reason why we're doing this is because we're actually gonna create uh, some uh, a dynamic class that is going to be set to, um, we're gonna say state dash followed by the state um, of the actual uh, current object. So what this is gonna do is, uh, for example, if the value of the field that we're currently working with is uh, selected, then it's gonna be state dash S. Uh, if it's excluded, it'll be state dash X and uh, so forth for the other uh, states that there are. And this will allow us later on, once a user can actually make a selection, it'll allow them to uh, be able to see uh, exactly what the state of this current data point is. So once we've done that, we are going to return our actual uh, value. So we just have a div and we're going to set the key um, to be value. Uh, once again, React wants you to set a key for each iterative uh, value that each iterative component that you might have and then we'll say class name is classes dot join with a space so that our classes will be listed out and then we want to have our value here so once we have mapped through our list we want to actually set our filter list to uh, be this filter list that we created So there's our update list, and then we want to return our component at the end, which is going to be a filter component. It's going to have a title. And we're gonna have our separator image. We don't actually need any alt text because it's just a separator image. There's no relevant uh, text as to what this image might be. And then we are going to have our content, which will be our list of filter components. Perfect. So that's our filter done. Now we are going to need a um, main component that houses all of our filters inside of our header. So we're gonna create a new component called filters with an S. We're gonna pluralize that one so that we know that this is the one that's gonna house all of the filters. Um, the CSS for this one is super easy because we're just gonna have our filter, uh, our main component and our titles, all right, our title that just says um, filters uh, and so this will be a super easy component as well so we're just going to import react here uh, we're gonna import our CSS we're gonna import our uh, filter components that's all we really need create our new component export it and the only thing this will do is this will return a filter uh, this will return a div class name of filters uh, we're gonna have our title container the 
with our title inside of it. This is filters. Um, and then after our title container, uh, we are going to put each one of our filters. So let's start with just one. We'll say, um, you know, we'll give it a title of ratings, rating, and a field of content rating. Perfect. So we have this and let's go into our header and import our new filters. Right, so we'll have our logo and then we'll have our filters. Um, and then we're gonna add a quick empty div in here. This will just be uh, the div uh, for uh, some later components that we're going to create and the only reason I'm adding this div in right now is just so things look a little nicer over here so that this final div will be over on this side. Our filters are right here and we can see that we have our ratings filter that we just created. We can scroll through see all the values. We can see that we have that none there so there are um, uh, there are movies that have no rating and we want them to be we want the user to be able to say show me all the movies that have no rating so we give them that none with the ability to click on it clicking isn't there yet that's coming in the next step um, and then we can see how easy it is to add new filters in because we can just let's add one for uh, country so we just add country in there see now we have our country we can add in language. Field equals language. And we can add in, let's say we'll add in uh, color, which is basically whether or not a movie is color, a color movie or a black and white movie. So you see there, we now have all of our filters. Uh, it's a nice, easy display that allows the users to scroll through and see whether or not they want to make these selections. So to recap, um, we've now created lists with the engine. We've done this by uh, creating a definition, a list definition that specifies our field. We've added some sorting in, uh, and then we do the same thing of creating a session object, subscribing to the changed event with a callback. And then in our callbacks, uh, what we do here is we do our get layout uh, to grab the layout uh, that has our data inside of it. We map through our list uh, of values in order to create our individual components uh, that get outputted into these lists. So next up, we're gonna be uh, actually making these lists clickable and allowing the user to make actual selections inside of our Click app. So uh, if you enjoyed the content of this video, please remember to like. Uh, you can also subscribe and update your notifications so that the next videos that we put out will show up on your list in YouTube. Uh, please feel free to join the Slack channel. Uh, it's a great channel uh, full of click uh, power users that will help you out if you have any trouble with what's going on. Uh, visit developer.click.com. We've got a whole bunch of open source uh, projects and extensions uh, and knowledge items uh, sitting on that website to help you uh, through your learning journey of Click itself. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.